It is Ski TV, which on Tale Mamelo is Sundown's legend. How are you feeling? Ah, you're right, bro. How's it? I'm good. Thank you, man. I mean, uh, I think even before we start, I have to say this as well. And I always write about it. Uh, I say that I need to say thank you so much to you. Um, I remember that I, I started at Sokala Duma in 2017. Yes. And you were such a fine gentleman. One of the first people to always pick up a call when I needed an interview. You and Andre Sebola, for me, I will never forget you wherever I am and whatever happens to my career. I just want to say thank you so much for always being a gentleman. Some former players are very difficult to deal with. Uh, you call them, they don't want to pick up the phone or they, yeah. you know, so you've always been that gentleman and I want to say that thank you so much for always being like that. No, thank you very much, uh, Nkulu. Even, you know, on my side, you know, it's, it's a pleasure because you always market us, you know, mm. it puts us on the market because now, you know, when you're out of football for such a long time, people tend to forget about you. So mm. it works both ways, you know, and I really appreciate my brother. Yeah, I mean, before we start, when I, man, I think um, I thought about this as we came here and I really wanted to make you watch uh, something from your playing days. It's a video of a final that you played in, an unforgettable match. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you still remember this. That's, uh, <laughs> that's yeah, Sundowns no. versus Chiefs. Chiefs, yeah. Rothman's final, 1998. Yes. Yeah, the goal of five that was uh, disallowed. <laughs> yes, I remember this one. You know, it's, it's still hurting even this time. You know, because it was one of that that moment where we could have put another medal on your cabinet. You know, yeah. But now it is what under the bridge, my brother. Even though it still hurts. Yeah, I mean, I spoke to a lot of these people that played in that game. Roger Fatumba. Mm -hmm. um, I've spoken to Eric Ramasike. I've spoken to a lot of players that played in that game, okay. and Eric Ramasike says that for the first time in his life as a man, he actually cried. Yeah. Can you describe to us what happened in the aftermath of that game? How was the dressing room? Oh, you know, after the game, you know, we couldn't believe what happened. And then you look at the guys, their faces, you know, we are all down, you know. But, you know, it was something that we couldn't change, you know. So we had to accept and move, you know, move on with, with our lives. And then uh, at least after that, we managed to, to pull through and started, you know, uh, pulling up our socks and do well in the uh, other games. Yeah. yeah. And... You played so many finals with Kaiser Chiefs, and some of them went to f to penalties as well. Uh, this one in particular went to penalties, and then of course Kaiser Chiefs won. Um, for you, were these battles with Chiefs in the '90s in the finals? Were you always guys looking forward to them? What were you talking about in the dressing room before you faced Chiefs in the finals? Uh, you know, uh, you know, playing Chiefs is always a, a motivation, you know, and it was easy for us to motivate ourselves before the coach will come mm. to motivate us, you know, reason being, you know, wherever I play Kaiser like Chiefs, the stadium was always packed, you know, and to capacity. So playing in front of such uh, big crowds, you know, it was motiva motiva uh, motivating all already before even the coach come to us, you know, so it was easy. Even though, you know, playing them, it was difficult sometimes to beat them. Because mm. most of the games, you go to the penalties. And you, uh, unfortunately, you used to lose on, on the penalty shootout. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> that's something about you, Hori. Uh, some of the fans would say, you know what? Some goalkeepers are good in penalties. Did you feel, Uti, when you could have done better in penalties? Was it a strength of yours? I'm a penalty. Yeah, it was my strength for the fact that you remember the, 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 the rough match that we lost in 1998, you mm. know? I mean, she uh, took three penalties without, you know, without court scoring, you know? So it tells you that, you know, it was my strength, you know? But I think uh, even Brian was good on penalties. So yes. it was that competition between me and him and, you know, but unfortunately on my side, you know, we used to, to, to lose, but, you know, it was my strength, you know. Yeah. Going to the penalties, I know one or two, I'll get it, you know, out of that fight. Let's go into the battle between you and the Spider-Man. <coughs> I mean, he, Spider-Man was sexy, he had the appeal, uh, he had the blonde dreadlocks, women mm. loved him, mm. people loved him, yeah. and then you were in competition with him, uh, even sometimes Bafana Bafana you would be competing, even though I know at that time there was Andre Arense, Hans Funk, a lot of other goalkeepers as well, mm. but locally here, what was the rivalry and how was the rivalry? Did you always get up from your house and think, Ish, this guy is giving me a hard time, I want to outclass him? No, 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 cool. We know what happened. You know, I was always focusing on my game. Uh, reason being, you no, know, I didn't want to focus on uh, Brian because I, I, I know even Brian was not focusing on me. He was focusing on my game. So the thing that I was doing, I was telling myself that I have to do the best, you know, before before the team. 
I put myself first. I said, no, as long as I can play well, you know, the rest will, will be follow. So mm. that was my game plan. I never thought of anyone else except to say, let me give my best. And then I think, you know, my best will be good enough for the team, you know, to be number one goalkeeper for Sundowns. Yeah. Were there, did you get a lot when you were growing up at the time as a young superstar playing for Sundowns? Did you get a lot of people comparing the two of you? Or, you know, uh, like, did you get all of those comments, even amongst your teammates, giving you that confidence? You're going to know you are better than Brian. Uh, my teammates were relying more on me, you know, uh, they were more confident on me and uh, like I said, I never had those things before. Uh, people uh, compare me and Brian, you know, I, I, I don't remember, you no know, people coming to me and say something about that, you know. But even for me, I know it was going to be, uh, it was a tough, a tough challenge, you know, facing him most of the time because I wanted to beat him, you know, I wanted to beat Chiefs. No, not Brian as such, to beat Chiefs to make sure that at least we get trophy winning Kesa Chiefs, you know, it was going to be a, a, a big thing for, for us. Yeah, I know? mean, you played in some of the most, I mean, Pito Musumane, whatever he's doing now, Pito Musumane is excellent. If yes. he wins yeah. uh, the league now after lockdown, then he would have repeated uh, what you guys did, which is win three back-to-back titles. Yeah. But you played in the most iconic Sundowns team at the time. Um, talk to us about the mentality and the players and the coaches. I mean, I think 98, 99, 2000, you won the league yeah. three times in a row. Yeah. How was it there and what kind of players did you have and the mentality that they had at the time? I think the players that I had there, they were more of a mature players. Saying that you look at the ages that we have there, most of them they were over 30. Mm-hmm. So they know what makes them to be there, you know. They know what, what is that they, they, they have to achieve in, you know, in football before they retire. So I think it helps a lot because of most of them, when you look at them, they were mature, they were calm. You look at Roger Fetumba, you look at uh, uh, Mambush Mudao, yes. you look at uh, Matthew Booth, you know, Eric Ramasike. Most you call the names, you don't struggle to find those names. So mm. it tells you, you know, the players that are amongst them and... It really uh, motivated me. It makes me what, what I am today because of them, because they were good uh, quality players that, you know, always know what they want. Yeah, there's also the comparison because now Sundowns is experiencing the same level of success that they did at the time. <coughs> Champions League finals. I mean, you guys played in the Champions League know, final yes. in, two, in 2001. You lost to al This generation, yes. they played in the Champions League final and they won. And they now going to win or they might win the third title in a row. When you look at these young men, Dennis Onyango, um, all of these guys now, when you look at the quality that they have now mm-hmm. versus the quality that you had then, mm-hmm. is it fair to make a comparison? Or maybe are there any players that could play in this squad that could play in your team at the time? Yeah, I think to compare the two teams is, is going to be unfair, you know. Why am I saying that? You look at the players that we had before, Abu Raja Fetumba. Mm-hmm. You look at the team that they have now, you know. More of a, a disciplined team in terms of a from Pokegana. He's been there, he's, he's getting uh, old now, but he's still performing well, you know. So the style of play by then and the style of, uh, of today is not the same. So it's a bit difficult because you look at a team like Al Ali that time, it was difficult to beat them. You look at the players that they have, Abu, 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 Abu Trika, all those guys, you know, it was very difficult to beat them and play them away uh, in Egypt, you know. But you see the changes that are uh, uh, happening now. Now, uh, sometimes they were fortunate to play them first in Egypt and then yes. they play at home. But in our time, there was uh, so no, 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 no such things because we were struggling. Most of the time, we play at home before we go to Egypt. Always second leg will be in Egypt, you know, so it was a bit challenging, you know. Even us, we were asking ourselves questions. How come you always, when you want to uh, we go to the final, we have to play away, not uh, in South Africa? Mm. So that's the thing. Then comparing, I think, to, to don't be fair, you know, to compare the, the two teams. Because the style of play is not the same. Yeah, and the coaching yeah, as well. The coaching. Um, you, let's talk about that. I mean, you. I, I know that at some point there was Paul Dolaza, yes. uh, but I, I think the treble winning coach was uh, Ted Dimitro yes. as well. Uh, let's talk about him. I mean, they say he's a master. Um, a lot of people who know him knows that from his hands came out big coaches. You know, for you, from a personal point of view, in terms of how you experienced him, Ebenja uh, and Ted Dimitro and really just the way in which he marshaled the team to win three league titles in a row? Uh, you know, you talk about the late Ted Dumitu, may his soul rest in peace. He was one of the best coaches. I mean, the best coach, reason being, you know, wherever he played the game, he's always calm, you know, he always makes you to understand and believe in yourself, you know, that's what makes us to be to gel very quick and then, you know, believe in ourselves. And I think it, it, it you know, it gels to the players, even mm-hmm. us and 
That's how we uh, managed to win that uh, three league. Titles in a row. Yeah, was he the kind of coach that plans in advance? You know, some coaches uh, we hear <coughs> Guti Omonye Uzoraz Guti. What is the shoe size of the striker of the other team? You know yeah. that level of detail. Yena, from a technical tactical point of view, mm. what made him shine above the other coaches at the time? I think it's because of he was always focused on his team. You know, uh, he planned uh, his team before he play he play the game and. He never talk much about the opponents, you know. Oh. So yeah, he always has to make us believe that we are the best. And the minute your mind tells you that you are the best, you know, you always you go out there and you know give your best, and that's what that's what is his secret. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about you. I mean, you, <clears throat> your career. You played for Bafana Bafana briefly. Uh, you know, not as many matches as you would have liked mm -hmm. uh, as well. I, I think maybe on a very light note. Everyone has a perception you you don't see at night. Mm -hmm. Tell it is TV fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is no, it true that you can't see it? I at know night? where the story comes from. I think uh, it's Matt Christine who wrote about it. You know what happened? Uh, we were playing Cape Town against Cape, against Cape Town Spurs. Mm -hmm. And then we beat Cape Town Spurs. Uh, and then we were going to play uh, Hellenic in the final of Coca Cola mm -hmm. when we beat them in Blue Fountain. So what happened after playing that game of Cape Town Spurs? I was man of the match. And then what happened after that? Uh, during the week, we were playing Hellenic. And remember that we were going to play Hellenic against Way uh, uh, in the final. So I was sitting on the bench, you know, it was at night. Then he came and asked me why I'm not playing, you know. Said, I said to him that, no, I'm not quite comfortable playing uh, to play at night, you know. So that's what it was. I said, tricky. <laughs> but I didn't want to tell him, you know, what's happening because of we didn't want Hellenic to see us, you know, that sure. we're going to, you know. You're still playing yeah, in the play final. It. Yes. So that's where it comes, and then he wrote about it. You no, know, the goalkeeper cannot see at night. But it wasn't true. The reason being that I've won so many trophies at night, you know, when you're playing in FND. You yeah. know, and, you know, uh, the rest is history. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so to, to you, it never bothered you. You were looking at it maybe as a joke, or is it something that worked in your mind? There's this perception, like, how did it affect you at the time when you were playing? No, it never affected me. You know, something that you know that is not true. No, why worry or worry mm -hmm. about yourself? So I was not worried at all. I was just myself. And then I, when I go there and play even at night, I was not going to play there to perform to show the people that no, I can, you know, I can see you know, it. I was still myself, you know. And then most of the time we play the games at night. And I say these penalties at night. Right, Prof. was at night, you know. So how can you say four penalties or five penalties at night when if you can't see, you know? So it's, you know, everything just, you know, it, it explains itself. Well, there you go. I mean, that's an interesting story indeed. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's look at your career then now uh, as, a, as a goalkeeper from where you started um, before Sundowns where were you playing and how did you join Sundowns did you know what they wanted you at the time uh, when I started I was uh, with the Blue Fountain Celtics but I didn't stay long and I got hurt because of I had a shoulder injury you know and then I stayed home for almost two years you know trying to recover you know I was operated on my left shoulder so wow. and then after that I went to join a Free State Stars but how did I join Free State Stars? I went to Kwakwa to join Maholo Siani. And then uh, when I was playing for Celtics, the late Kurt Vermeulen and Temba Stolle, they were still playing for Celtics, you know. Then they heard that I was in Kwakwa. Then they told the late by Mike Mugwena that, hey, John is here, he's around, you know. So Temba Stolle, even when he was a player, he was still recruiting. He was still Because he's a legendary yeah, recruiter. Yeah. He's a very big recruiter yeah, for Free State you know, Stars, yeah. Yeah, immediately when they heard that I'm in Kwakwa, then they said, told Bram again, they even told Sarah and Steve Compare that him and there's this guy, you know, if he can join us, I think he'll help us a lot, you know. So that's how I joined Free State Stars, mm -hmm. you know. I took my staff from uh, Katana Marussia and I didn't even tell them, you know. Then I was just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> decided to, to join Free State Stars. You sure. Know? Yeah. And then you played there. Um, it was still called Quarko Stars, obviously, Quarko at Stars, the time. Yes, yeah. um, in terms of you being a professional, was it a very difficult transition to become a professional goalkeeper? Uh, was it easy for you to be in the dressing room with professional players, being paid for what you do? Did you always know, Guti, when are you going to be, it's going to be you and it is key and that's it? Uh, it wasn't that, that difficult, you know, reason being, you know, when you go to, like, when I joined Free State Stars, uh, by then it was Kwakwa Stars, you know, the people that I played with before, they were there, you know, so it makes my, my, my job very easy, mm. you know, and you look, uh, you play with uh, the, the great guys like Steve Compella, Saramel Swaka, you know, they are, they are, they are, you know, they are educated, those guys, mm -hmm. and they, they motivate you when you come there, even if you beat, uh, you know, uh, uh, the anxiety is there, they will mm -hmm. just calm you down and, you know, that's how I grow and then it makes me a better player, 
you know, yeah. Yeah, and any achievements that you remember from that point, or was there any relegation when you were with them? Because I know Club Stars had a problem with being relegated yeah. and being promoted as well. You, how long did you stay with them, and what are some of the highlights, maybe? Uh, I think I stayed there for six six years, and you know, we never been relegated, you know, mm. and we won one trophy, which was a Coca Cola, Coca Cola Cup. In a, 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 1994. I remember, I remember, you know, when yeah. they won the NetBank Cup yeah. recently, yeah. that we were talking about, yeah. it was almost 20 years, 20 years. since yeah. they won the Coca-Cola Coca Cup, Cup, I remember yes, that, yeah. you know. So, and then, uh, after winning the Coca-Cola Cup, we went to the final the same year, you know, mm. with Val Professional, but unfortunately, we lost 1-0 in that game, and then, yeah, but being with the Free State Stars, it wasn't difficult because of we're always in a top eight bracket, so it tells you that we're working very hard. Mm. And you know, the guys that were there, they matured, you know, very intelligent people. Most of them, they are teachers, you know, that. And you know, I even went back to school, you know, it, which was a plus for me because when I left uh, in Bloemfontein, you know, I was only had, I only had a grade, grade 10. Mm. And I finished my metric there, you know, and we did my grade nine and, and, and grade, I mean, grade 11 and grade 12. Yeah. Quaco, yeah, so. yeah so, so it was the influence of uh, Bontate Serame, yes, uh, you know, Libo Bontate, Bontate, Bontate Compella, Compella as well. Most of Moses Muloi, David yeah. Villagas, Magic Salomon, you know, they were all teachers. So, you know, <laughs> when I came there, they told me, John, you know, he had he got the opportunity, but Mike, you know, always allow us to go to school, you know. It was an, an opportunity for me, so I decided to go to Tukwana uh, 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 school and then I uh, finished my grade 12 there. Sure, nice yeah. one. At some point, obviously, some sundowns comes calling. Uh, is there any interesting story behind your transfer? Uh, did you really know Wuti Bayakulum and the sundowns? What happened? Did you just pack your bags and leave or your contract had ended? Yeah, it was very difficult. But then, you know, there was no thing that, that thing of saying my contract is finished and I'm leaving, you know. And what happened? In fact, it was Chiefs that wanted me by then, you know. I was with the Bafana Bafana in African Nations Cup. And then, Which um, one, 98 or 2000? Uh, African Cup that we won in 1996. Oh, 96. Oh, you were yes. part of the squad? Yes. Oh, nice so one. I was part of that, that team. And then what happened? You no, know, uh, Chiefs wanted me. And then Bramaik uh, knew about it. You know, I think they spoke to Bramaik, but then he said, no, there's no way that we'll sell John. It was after Steve joined Chiefs, and then I don't know what happened when Steve went to Turkey. There were issues there. I don't know what was happening. Then Bramaik didn't want me to leave, to not leave with stars. So it was so difficult. And then I stayed home for almost about seven months without touching the ball, you know, because he didn't want to sell me, you know, I was, uh, Bramag liked, liked me more, more than, you know, anyone in the team, because most sure. of the time, whenever I knocked at his door, he'll open the door for me and, you know, ask me, John, what is that you want, you know, and then whenever, whatever ask you, he'll give me, you know, so I think it was difficult for me, that transition, and he said to me, hey, John, you're not going to go anywhere, you know, so I stayed at home for almost seven months. So were you protesting by staying at home or was it him not fielding you at all? What was the, what was the rationale behind you not playing for seven months? Uh, what happened when I came back from the national team? They didn't, they didn't want to pay me. They told me that, no, you made a lot of money. <laughs> so that's where everything started. You know, I didn't have a problem to go back to the team. Because sure. It is a team that I, I know I liked, you know, very much. So uh, that's where everything started. And then, you know, knowing that now I'm struggling to get my salary and then there are teams that want me with a better offer. You know, I made up my mind saying that, you know what, I'd rather stay home until they release me. And then it happened like that. So at that point, you don't have any agent or someone helping you? No, I didn't have agent by then, you know. <laughs> Most of the players at that time, you know, you didn't have agents, you know. Sure. You know, you do things so by, by yourself. All right. Yeah. Eventually, was there any temptation for you then to join Chiefs or di at what point did you, did you hear Wooty Sundowns is also in the picture? Uh, when I was at home, I got a call uh, from the late Jabu Kumalo, mm -hmm. who was a PRO for Free Sisters, Free Sisters by then. They told me that they will join uh, sometimes they were here, they want you, you know, they want you to join them, you know. And then they, uh, I could receive another call from Natasha Chiklas. Then she told me that, John, we agreed with Brother Mike, you know, uh, there's the fee that we gave him, you know. He told me, she told me about the amount. And then that's how it happened. And then I went to Sundowns. Mm. And at, at, at the time, you were not involved in the negotiation up to a point where they're telling you you are going to Sundowns? No, I was not involved in the <laughs> negotiations, you know. Yeah, but I know the amount that they bought me, sure. it was 250000 by then. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that was too much by then, you know. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a that's lot of, a lot of, of money. money. Yeah, yeah. For 1996, that's a lot of yeah. money. Now, at what point, at, at some point in the seven months, does Kaiser Chiefs come to you when you are at home and say, look, uh, try and make these moves or... The last time you heard was that they were speaking to Free State that they never came to you to say, 
go and get your clearance there. No, they never, they never, you know, said they never said even a word to me. I was just by myself, you know, mm. and then yeah, it happened like that. So when sundowns came in the picture, I said, you know what, it's not a bad, you know, a, a, you know, a team to join. Then mm. I went to them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you get there, you became you become an iconic player for mm. sundowns. I mean, I, I I look at that team all the time, and I'm like. These were so such an amazing bunch of players. Yeah. Even when you look at Chiefs, even when you look at Pirates, like you, they were, these teams were big teams at yeah. the time, and they always had decent players. When, uh, how would you summarize your career at Sundowns? Did you feel like there were any things that you would have liked to achieve? I mean, we spoke about the finals yeah. earlier on, but when uh, summarizing your stay at Sundowns, were there things that you wanted to achieve that you didn't get to achieve? Would you say that you are satisfied when you look back at your career at Sundowns? Yes, you know, when I joined Sundowns, I knew that it's one of the big teams, you know, that always win trophies, you know, and going there, I know that, I knew that, you know, I was going to achieve most of the, you know, the, the, the trophies that I, I want to, 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 to get to do. Mm. So it happened like that, and I was so fortunate, you know, when joining them, I, I joined the, 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 the players that, you know, big names like Eric was there, you know, uh, Mambush, Fire Masilela, you know, and it was easy for me to adapt to their style of play. Even though when I started, I was a bit rusty. Remember, I was at home for almost seven months mm. without touching the ball. You know what happened when I joined them? The first game that I played, two days, 10 weeks and downs, we went to play Free State Stars. In <laughs> so I was a bit rusty, but, you know, sure. I managed to pull through. Uh, reason being because the, the players that were there, they were supporting me because they know me, you know, and they were encouraging me, you know, to gain my, my, my form. And it happened like that. And then it was, you know, I had to, pay, to repay them back, you know. Sure. Yeah. And it happened like that. I was so, so pleased. When I, you, you are satisfied when you look back uh, with yeah. things that you achieved at Mamelodi Sundowns, you wouldn't want to change anything with your past there? No, I'm happy. You know, I don't regret, you know, my time, you know, with Sundowns because of. Uh, we managed to win the league three times, you know, in a row. We won a, a Coca-Cola, we won a Rothmans, you mm. know. So at least, I, I know at least I've got something that I can point, even if I'm not there, you know. We left the mark with the team and then I, I don't regret it at all. Yeah. yeah. All right. Eric, uh, yeah. uh, there, I don't know if he was still there. Yeah. I remember maybe I was 11 or 10. Yeah. There is a, either Rothmans Cup or Coca-Cola Cup. Yeah. Last minute goal scored by Cyril Nzama or others won it by Chiefs. Yeah, Cyril Nzama. C yes, Cyril yeah, Nzama. Yeah. Last minute. Last minute, yeah. It goes to extra time. Yeah. Goes to penalties. Yeah. Charles Mutloy, Michael Manzini, whatever happens there, Michael Manzini ends up taking the penalty. Yeah. And he was not supposed to take a penalty. Yes. He's a defender. Yeah. O'Brien Baloy saves it. And then Umambush. Yeah. Uh, club, Charles yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just talk to us about that moment, Uguti. As a team, how did you deal with it? What do you understand about the story? When? Uh, you know, unfortunately, that was far because when you take penalties, you no know, goalkeepers after you know saving the penalties, mm -hmm. always stay that side, you know. Uh, but I, uh, the, the, the way I heard the story it was that uh, Charles was supposed to take the penalty. You know, and he, I, I argued with, with Mambush, you know, and Manzini was injured, remember, because when Manzini went to take that penalty, he was limping. Yes, So, yes. yeah, I was not aware of that situation, you know. And then after Manzini missed that penalty, I was asking myself, how come this guy is limping and they still have other players in there, you know, why didn't he take, want to take responsibility, you know. Had I knew that uh, maybe Man, uh, Manzini, you know, was not 100%, you know, take that penalty, I was going to take it myself, you know. Sure. That's the moment that I regret because of, I think I was going to ask I was going to score it because of, you know, I was motivated after uh, saving so much penalties, you know. So, uh, but the way I hear that uh, Charles had an argument with the captain and then that's where Mambushi, you know, I think he, he started losing it and then gave him that, you know. Yeah. yeah was, uh, did the team make any big deal out of it afterwards? I mean, you've lost the final, the spirits yeah. are down. Was there any meeting or any threat yeah. you're going to know as a captain, you'll be suspended, you shouldn't be doing that. Was there any aftermath? Did you have a meeting as a team afterwards? You're going to know this is not the conduct of a captain. Yes, we had a meeting after that uh, and then that incident. But, you know, I think we've resolved it very well, you know, uh, like we know that uh, Natasha Chiglas, Angel Chiglas, it was like they were like parents to us, you know. We sat down and, you know, even now Mambush and, and Charles, they're still friends, they talk, you know. Mm. It's something that happened out of, you know, uh, uh, frustrations and, and you know, uh, after that, everything was okay. We sorted out, man, Charles was there, Mambush apologized, he even apologized to his family, you know, and everything was okay. Even Charles used to make it, 
make a joke about out of it, you know. <laughs> I remember when we were in Tunisia, he was saying to Mambush, hey, you know, hey, that love that you gave me that time, and it was varam, you know. <laughs> Even sometimes when I, I argue with my my wife, you know, I don't remember that time, because the girlfriend, and then she would always say to Charles, hey, I'll call Mambush, you know, you know, <laughs> give uh, problems to the, to the wife at home, you know. So it was just such like a, like a joke to us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the history that we have due to mm. those such moments in South African football is beautiful. Mm. Uh, let's wrap up then. Your stay at Sundowns has to end at some point. What happens? Does the contract uh, get not get renewed, or does someone else want you? How would you summarize after Sundowns? How was your career? Uh, uh, what happened after that? Uh, I think uh, I left Sundowns because they wanted to give me the same contract that I had three years ago. Or oh, in know? terms of the money the as money, well? Yes. Then I said, no, I can't go like this because I'm a number one goalkeeper. I play week in and out, you know. So then I decided to make a move, you know. That's when I got a call from uh, the late Zora Koza, the daughter of uh, Dr. Ivan Koza. Yes. Yeah, so I, I went to join Orlando Pirates. Did you feel any great sense? I mean, every time I talk about you yeah. and the fact that, you know, some, some kids don't understand that you played for... Uh, when, so when they see Wayne Sunderland yeah. moving from Sundowns so to Orlando Pirates, I'm like, no, this has happened before. And even yeah. maybe before you, yeah. it has happened before. Yeah. Did you feel any great sense of betrayal? Or was it natural for you that you're just taking care of your career? Um, you are moving to a better place, perhaps? No, you know, I always believe in God, you know, I pray for everything that I do and uh, I think it was a time for me to move, you know, to move on with my life because of, I didn't want to stay at Sundowns when I'm not happy, you understand? So I think after playing for almost uh, six to eight years without, without you know, uh, being injured, you know, being part of the team, you know, from the beginning, I think it was a bit unfair for me, you know, to, you know, to, to, to be treated like that, like that. So I made up my mind, I said, you know what, let me just move on and try to see where God will put me, mm -hmm. you know. Fortunately, that, that's when I received that call from the late Zora Koza. Then I joined Paris, and then fortunately when I joined Paris, we won the league that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so yeah. Gordon Egerson would have wanted you? No, it wasn't God, it was uh, Roy, Roy Pareto. Pareto, yes, sorry, yes. yes. Roy, Roy Pareto, Pareto also yeah. won, yeah. yeah. Uh, how was that dressing room and the players, if you can remember, um, what were some, were some of the players who were very instrumental uh, in terms of Paris winning there? Yeah, and I think uh, it was much easier for me to join Paris, you know, knowing that I've been winning trophies from Sundowns, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, unfortunately, even when I joined Paris, uh, I was struggling to, to settle, you know, uh, in, in the sense that uh, I had to train at least for two to three weeks before I get fit because after I left Sundowns, I stayed home for almost a month, you know, mm -hmm. without getting a team. But what happened, I met the people like uh, William Okpara, mm -hmm. I met Papi Khumani, they were a bit mature, yes. you know, most of them, the mature players. So, uh, Papi was my friend, even from the national team, you know, so I think they, they, they appreciated me, you know, yeah. and then they made things uh, easier for me. You know? It must not have been easy, though, I mean, moving from Sundowns to and Opara. I mean, Opara yeah. was Pirates for years. No, keeper, he yes. was Pirates. Like, yes. when you think Opara, you think Orlando Pirates. Yeah. And for years, he was their main goalkeeper. So, I mean, how did you deal with that level of competition? Did you, did you feel that you were playing lesser games as you got to Pirates because there's Opara now? No, when I came to Paris, I think that's when Okpara started, you know, uh, uh, dropping, you know, mm -hmm. for form was, well, his form was dropping. And then uh, when I went there, it was easy for me knowing that I've won leagues, you know, several times it's, it's announced. And, you know, even when I came to Paris, uh, Okpara were coming with, you know, uh, you know a warm, warm dance. Sure. Know, so I was more comfortable, especially for him because of we're competing in the same position, you know. So it makes my job much easier. And then uh, after joining Paris, I went to Spain with Bafana Bafana mm. and trained there with uh, Sheikh Mashaba. So we stayed in Spain for almost uh, seven days. When I came back, I was, you know, uh, fit. And then that's when I went straight to the team. And, you know, I played about seven games without conceding a goal. Mm. That's when we went to win the league with Orlando Paris. Nice one. Yeah. Nice one. And then um, I think there was Manning Rangers at some point as well. There was rain, there was Paris, there was Rangers. Just wrap up for us in terms of what else did you do afterwards? I know that there was also coaching as well at yeah. some point in your career. Yeah, no, I went to join uh, many Rangers. That's where I you know uh, my career ended, you know, in, uh, with many Rangers. And then what happened uh, after that, I went to the courses, uh, coaching courses, you know, and, and uh, I have the that uh, certificate for goalkeeper coaches at level one. So then I started, you know, working and then... Uh, 
I started working with Steve Compel and under 10 Trip National Team and Saramel Swaga. I was you know, working with both of them because Saramel was the under 20, under 17, okay. and then Steve was under 23. So I worked with them in both a, a national team. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Would you say, I know that you've coached in the Glad Africa Championship when it was uh, NFT. Yeah. Uh, your association with football, would you say to our viewers that that was the end of it or any ambition of ever coaching Sundowns like Pizzo was a player at Sundowns he eventually coached uh, would you say that perhaps you have any ambition of coaching in the in the big time yeah I think I'm still one kind of to football sure you know, yeah and then football is my life you know it's my career and I still have to go back and thank the, the people that have been supporting me all the time you understand so I think it's just a matter of time I think soon we'll hear that uh, I'm back in football. Oh, nice one. Thank nice one. Much. John, as usual, like I said at the beginning, I appreciate you. You've always been a gentleman. Uh, one day we shall meet uh, again for lunch and say thank you properly uh, for giving us, you know, always your time and being generous. Otherwise, we thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, you know, and you're welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.